we were doing something over at Christmas. As you know, Fez has had a... Um, he's had an off couple years buying me presents. And this year, it seemed like you were doing the thing of... You were going to buy me bad presents and then come to my house and give me something terrific. Uh-huh. Uh, Fez comes over to my house. We have a lovely dinner together. Uh, we all sat around discussing the years. And then uh, he gives me multiple presents... Uh, one being um, what time of the, a book that tells you what time of the day is best to do what t- things. <laughs> Not exactly a Ronnie B thing, but uh, I thought, well, this is odd. Uh, but then he gives me something remarkable, and that's a watch I could use to change my iPod. And you know, uh, Dave, owning an iPod, how difficult it is to change your iPod. You <laughs> wish you could just... Uh, touch a watch while you're doing it so there's a, just it, one button on the ipod there's my watch right there you're not wearing it <laughs> uh you've known me for uh, decades Fez. right ever seen me with a watch on no but i thought this was kind of a unique thing where if you're walking through the city you can just hit your watch it was kind of a dick tracy type thing i thought why wouldn't i just hit my ipod well the watch would be easier to look at i thought how I don't know. I don't have an iPod because, but I thought it would. Uh, it just seemed very. It seemed very uh, cool, very gadgety. Yeah, um, you ever know me to be gadgety? No, but it seemed unique. But do you know me at all? Yes, I know you. I just, uh, the, just the thought of that. It just surprised me, and it made me think to myself: Does he know me? Have you guys ever heard me complain? Oh, when I'm walking through the... Uh, I can't put my hand in my pocket. I still understand. I the watch itself activates the iPod? Supposedly, I guess. Okay, but you, you still have to have your iPod headphones on. Yes. Okay, so the watch well, is It's just, like a remote control. <laughs> that's actually more of a hassle, I would think. Because I wouldn't know. <laughs> Never even took it out of the box. Because you need the iPod handy for the headphones because iPod headphones aren't really long, so you have it in your hand anyway if, if you have the headphones on. Why won't you just get me a box of cigars? What keeps you from doing that? Well, I thought I found something really unique. I'm Why? trying to find something special. Why? Why? Because it would be too easy to give you cigars. How uh, Too easy would be nice, though. It's something I like. How often do you even see me with my iPod? Um, sometimes I see in the morning. Right. Does it look like I'm struggling with <laughs> fronting the songs? First of all, why would I even need to switch songs? It's my iPod. I put the fucking songs in there. Yeah, and also, usually technology, the way it's been going is it's getting condensed. You don't add things. You don't add a watch to work an iPod. I would have rather so he got me... an iPod controls. I wish he would... I would have... I wish he would. First of all, my phone has a fucking clock on it. Yeah. So I really don't need to fucking. And, uh, you know, I don't have to be here at noon. Getting places is not a big deal for me. Not going to wear an underwater watch that switches the iPod that's already in my fucking pocket. That's too many things. That's why we have the Blackberries and the iPhones, because we have, can just put it all into one thing. By the way, another thing that has a clock iPod. Oh, yeah. There's a clock they do? Oh, he's... Did you look into this at all? <laughs> well, I tried. I just saw, I saw do you it. Know I thought how... it was very neat. Do you know what? I tried to do a foot, but not, but, but that, would that be for me? Is that something that you would want for yourself? I'm always curious about how you buy presents. Well, I always think of something that I think someone would like, that they would find special. But you've got to know me, right? Sure. I don't wear a watch. Right. And I don't struggle with fucking changing the song on my iPod. It's fucking kind of an insane thing. But I actually, I even said to my chick, I go, do you think he pays any attention to me? I sit right next to him. And I said to him, get me cigars. I even started doing a thing this year. I kind of dropped a gadget hint for months on the ebook th- thing to mm. see if he would fucking pick me up one. <laughs> Never heard it. And I'd be like this sometimes during the show. And even after the show, i go, those fucking e-books are fucking cool as hell, huh? I don't know. I haven't got one yet. I haven't really seen it. <laughs> e-book. And then I, because I know that he tries to look for hints. Maybe for other people. 
I guess I wasn't picking up on it this year. My GIF radar was down. He seems to think you're a bigger, sharper image type fan. He sees me as that, which I'm fucking not at all. You should get one any of those, those clown fucking yeah, stores. One of those like crystal balls that when you touch it, little electric sparks go to your finger. I'm sure Ron would like that. That's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> Makes you look like the Emperor from Jedi. I saw him uh, give out a cordless charger this year, right? So after Fesley's, we put the cordless charger together. Three cords attached to the cordless charger. It looks like, and I don't know, I think you hit it. He goes in the fucking um, Sharper in, Image, or what is that fucking stone Hand place? Hammaker Schlemmer? Brookstone? Oh, Brookstone. It's yeah, he's one. a Brookstone guy. <laughs> like every grandmother. <laughs> Off the Brookstone it is. They're all the same. The Brookstone and the Hammaker Schlemmer, Sharper Image. It's just, hard to believe there's even a market for that stuff. Which is digitized crap. And then they're going, well, do you want to try to figure out your, your watch? I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> oh, I'm running late on time. Better fucking switch this to Pearl Jam. My mom got me a shower radio from Sharper Image that literally said, don't get it wet. <laughs> like, Gary, what, is, what the fuck is this? Because she knows how much I like to sing in the shower. Now, my brother Corky, he decided he was going to get my sister something for Christmas. And, Is that unusual? Well, no, but I just had to hear about this thing over and over again. Um, it's the perfect brownie pan. Now, I had never heard of what was wrong with brownies, that there needed to be a perfect brownie pan. And the way he uh, described it to me was, it's a perfect brownie pan. Uh... All the brownies are separated. They bake separately. That way, you don't get uh, icing all over the brownies. You can de you can decorate them separately. So, like, one brownie could have a bird or a tiger or a flower. And then, that way, since they're separated, the icing from the tiger wouldn't mix together with the bird icing. And that's why they call it a perfect brownie pan. Who and puts icing on fucking brownies? <laughs> I had never heard of that in my life, and I don't know who's decorating them with birds and tigers. <laughs> then did, did he give it to your sister? Well, yeah. Not only did he give it to my sister, Ron. Explained it. He, uh, well, yes, we got the explanation again about the <laughs> bird and the tiger icing not getting on the bird icing. But not only did he give it to her, Ron. He gave her two. He didn't realize that he had bought the perfect brownie pan and wrapped it up for my sister and then decided, oh, here's another great gift. Perfect brownie pan where you can keep the brownie separated. That way the frosting isn't getting mixed up. Wrapped up a second one for her. He had forgotten he had wrapped one up. She got two perfect brownie pans. On Christmas Day. It's a pillhead family, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little bit of one, yes. Who's all on pills down there? Let's see. I got a sister on pills. I got a brother on pills. I believe my mother is on pills, but she hides pills. Mm. My father is, of course, on all his heart pills, which makes him nuts. I, you know, I, I've taken pills. I'm on my heart pills. I was thinking about you with your flight problems and then seeing that fucking terrorist who tried to... Uh, blow up the plane, I guess, from his asshole or his ball sack. I couldn't really fucking make it out. But I guess he had swallowed this bomb thing or whatever. I thought it was, like, hidden in his underwear. And that he was mixing... That all the, the way they were saying it sounded like, with the going to the bathroom for so long, uh -huh. I thought maybe he had to shit it out. Hmm. Maybe, But I couldn't figure it out. Because he kept the... Maybe because he kept the chemicals separate. And so he had to mix them on the plane. Hmm. And that's when his underpants caught on fire. So, and of course... Lots of security as I'm flying back to New York yesterday. A little a long, extra lines. They're making sure they're very thorough with everyone else. Then, as we're flying into LaGuardia, I look, and uh, under the row in front of me, I see, like, this black case, and it's tucked into the carpet underneath the row of seats in front of me. All right, hold on. There's a black case. Mm-hmm. Like a little black case. Mm -hmm. and it's, How little? 
I would say probably about six, seven inches. And half of it is under the carpet of the of the airliner, of the plane. And then it's tucked in there. And so you immediately thought bomb? I immediately thought bomb. But, I mean, we're, we're liter- when I spotted it, we were probably three minutes from actually touching down. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. I go, we're going to hit, and this thing's going to go. You know, you it's started like, having a full panic? Full panic attack. And the, ri- and, the, and the whole plane ride to begin with, with the weather, we just shook the whole time. So I was scared to death. And then I see this thing, and I'm thinking, this is on a sort, sort of timer. As soon as we're in New York and we're on the ground, boom. You know, there goes the entire plane. So we touch down, you know, and you can't get the stewardess because they're buckled in. We're that close to landing. Right. So we touch down, and I'm just, I'm closing my eyes, and I'm waiting for the boom to go off. And we land, and we start taxiing to the runway. And I'm like, all right, this is probably going to take another 10, 15 minutes to get to the gate where I can get off of this plane. I'm like, but I got to say something. So I'm thinking of hitting the call button once we're on the ground and taxing to bring the, the flight attendant over. And then I thought, no, if I do that, I'm not going to be at a gate and I can't get off of this plane. And we're going to be we're all going to be stuck on this plane with this thing. So okay. so I wait till we get to the gate and we they they do the unfasten your seatbelt uh, whistle. And I tell the flight attendant, I go, listen. In the row in front of me, there's this black case, and it's tucked into the carpet. Now, I'm, I'm thinking, all right, here we go. As soon as I say this, everybody's going to have to be lined up. Everybody's going to be questioned. I probably won't get home for another eight hours. She goes, uh, she goes, where is it? She's looking for it. I go, you can see it from my row, and I take her to my row so she can look at it. She picks the thing up, pulls it from out of the carpet, and she goes, this? And I said, yes, that. It was somebody's glasses case. Their eyeglasses. But it had, and she's like, see, it's just eyeglasses. And she's opening it up in front of me. It's like eyeglasses case. She doesn't know that. I was shocked after the events of Christmas Day that she would just go pull this thing out. And it was wedged in the carpet. And she pulled it out and just opened it. But why wouldn't you have even said to the people in front of you, hey, excuse me, is that a case underneath you? And they could have said, it's just my eyeglasses. Thank you. I dropped it. Because <laughs> the way it was wedged in there, it didn't look like it could come from that row. And then you really thought it was a bomb, but you didn't choose to save everyone because you could be forced to stay outside the thing longer. No, that, no, 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 because I was trying to get to the gate so everybody could get off the plane. Hmm. But I couldn't believe there is a strange object tucked inside the carpet of well, a, the inside of an airliner, it, it, and this is the procedure? But it's an eyeglass case. Right, but we don't know what's in that eyeglass case. I'm sure, I'm sure there wasn't a lot of chemicals in that uh, terrorist underwear. I thought for sure it would be, you know, that there was going to be questions, that there was a... No, she just walks over and grabs it. Who knows if it had been attached to something, or if she shook it, something would have gone off. So every time we see an eyeglass uh, case, uh, we should all panic? I think we should do what I do, responsibly say something, and then hope the airlines responsibly act by not just grabbing it without knowing what's in it. Hmm. But we know it's in it now, just eyeglasses. Well, now we know that. We didn't know that before. Mm. Uh, here's our old pal, Keith the Cop. Hey, Keith. Gentlemen, how are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. Fez, you, you, just, you, know, you just can't live your life paranoid because I deal with this shit all the time in the city. People call up to these suspicious packages on the street corner and stuff like that. You know, then my cops got to show up, and then we got to evacuate the area. We got to do all this shit. Says, you know what I do? What? I walk up to that thing. I kick that fucking thing right down the block. And it's always garbage. There's nothing in it. What oh, if it bullshit. But what if it wasn't? I'm doing my civic responsibility. Oh, no, I know. Listen, I, I understand. And this you called an adult, and an adult pointed out to you that it's just eyeglasses. 
Right. But at the time, she didn't know it was eyeglasses. Right. And so she opened the case. But every time that somebody leaves behind a shoebox, should the word world panic? Yes, the yeah. world should take notice. The world should investigate properly and safely. Yes. Why? Because we don't know it, what. But who's now we trying do. to blow stuff up. Now we do. But it's eyeglasses. We just had one almost blown up on Christmas Day over Detroit. Who's to say that this isn't a group activity and they were trying to get one in New York? People just get caught up in the paranoia of a lot of this stuff. And it goes back to when it started with the anthrax stuff. When we, when we first had the anthrax with 9-11 and everything, people were calling us left and right for anthrax stuff. Yeah, I remember CBS used to answer, uh, open our fucking mail at a different place. Yeah. Now, I get some nutty mail, and I'd rather say it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, one example, this lady calls us to her apartment. Very, you know, she's a wealthy lady. She's, she comes in. We get to the apartment. She's on sick floor, whatever. We get up there, and she's got the kids evacuated, everything. She's got, she's got the mail on the table. She's freaking out about it, right? We walk up. There's a couple things on this on the uh, little specs on on the mail. So I do a little police work and I investigate. Right next to it's the pizza box. I take my finger, I lick my finger, I put it on the thing. She goes, "Oh my god, what are you doing?" I put it in my mouth. Parmesan cheese. <laughs> it can't the belongs there. Paranoid. People yeah. just get crazy about this stuff. I mean. <laughs> The terrorist thing is so fucking uh, rare to happen. It really is. That we can't all live our life fucking panicked. Yeah, but this was really suspicious. If I just saw someone's eyeglass case and could make out what it was, maybe I would have felt differently. This is tucked into the carpet, and I can't tell what shape it is. But you did the right thing. You called an adult. The adult went over, opened it up, and said it's just eyeglasses. I don't know why you don't feel better about that. Why are you mad at her for just explaining the truth to you? Because I think she, if it had been something dangerous, it didn't seem like the proper procedure to go about just opening suspicious packages, suspicious containers. Did you want to slide down the slide onto the uh, tarmac? What did you want to do? I know. I wanted out that jetway. He, he wants those fucking bomb robots to come around all the time. <laughs> it he can't was, be a world of bomb robots. He wants Hurt Locker. Keith is actually the guy from Hurt Locker. Just going up to stuff. It's just, it, it's just Don't chase. ruin Hurt Locker for me. I haven't seen it. All right. Talk All to right, you later, gentlemen. Keith. All right, see ya. Peace. Why does um, Fez think about trains like going down to Florida? I would have said the same thing if I saw it on a train. All right, if you see a... <laughs> it doesn't what? matter. It was a suspicious package. But it's not suspicious once you open it up and look in it. But you shouldn't open it up if you don't know what's inside it. Why? Because everybody was still on the plane. We were all still on board. She could have endangered everybody if right. it was dangerous. But here's the deal. It's far more likely in life. Let's suppose, I haven't you ever gotten off a fucking plane and left your shaving kit there or something? Uh, every time I've traveled, I've left something in some fucking place, mm -hmm. or somebody else did. Ninety-nine percent of the time, not. What am I saying? Ninety-nine. I've never come up to. I've never walked into a bomb scene in my entire life. <laughs> there might as well be a Martian there, as there will be a fucking bomb for me. Um, eight six six run zero fez. Eight six six run zero fez. Look who it is. It's a daily leader. Hey, Fez, I'm at the uh, eye doctor's office, and I see a ton of eyeglass cases. Should I call up a bomb squad? Oh, the new year is ruined already by the Daily Leader calling in. No, oh, do, no. do what you did at the Christmas party and cry that I don't want to be your friend. Let's see if your optometrist uh, appreciates that. Hey, did you notice that Fezzy just got a little New York on us after all these years? He goes, and tell him I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> Go. Go. Pick it up. <laughs> call. Do what it you got to do. I'm there. The box is there. The stewardess is there. Eyeglasses are there. Go fuck off. All right, I just got something from Shower Bench. Okay. Who said, I told Fez to get you an e-reader and load it up with a few books that you would like. Right, oh. yeah. I mean, it was a suggestion. 
<laughs> but I said, I sat around and hit it. You said I never thought of it. I never picked up on it. He said he never thought of such a thing. And now I'm finding out the truth. Oh, boy. What else is going on? I think you hit the mark when he said it's a pill family. Um, Eric in New Jersey has a problem. You're on the Ron Fez show. Yeah, uh, Fezzy, I don't know what to do. I'm driving down the turnpike, and it's a suspicious package over my sun visor. What should I do? All right, that might just be your sunglasses, but let's not. Let's call in the bomb robot. If you don't know what it is, report it. I, That's what I did. It's what every government agency tells us to do. But And you know what? You probably did the right thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to agree with you. Thank you. Why are you then angry that the person said it's just eyeglasses? Because... I don't think that would be the procedure for a suspicious container. It's not a suspicious container. It's an eyeglass case. But she didn't know what it was when I told her about it. And she, she just opens it up. She just reached down and pulled it out from under the carpet. What if there's chemicals in there that she's mixing as she's yanking it out of the carpet? Do you see that you can be... And I'm being totally serious here. Do you see that you can make yourself crazy doing this? That every box now becomes a bomb for you? Um, here is, uh, Mike. Mike, you're on my face. Fezzy, do you realize how long travel would take if they had to call in the bomb squad every time somebody left a piece of carry-on on the plane? I think we've all done it. And, you know, we call up, hey, did you leave my, hey, I left my fucking, um, glasses at your restaurant. Can I come back and get them? Oh, yeah, here they are. <laughs> They're not going to act like I've left the bomb. <laughs> I told you the other day, we threw out my fucking beautiful sunglasses that uh, my caca gave me. I guess he listens to what I like. <laughs> why don't you just, why don't you tell Shower Bench? Good idea. Nah. You notice he didn't bring that up, that it was even suggested to him? Mm -hmm. Now, how would Shower Bench pick up on it? He listens. He listens to interesting. you. Shower very bench interesting. Shower Bench is usually very much in Fez's corner. Yeah, I know. And tried to be this time. Um, we have somebody from uh, TSA Security. Mr. Jones, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, uh, Fez, really, I'd like to speak to you for a little bit about what you've seen and what happened that day on that flight. And I really would be appreciated if you uh, could remember that stewardess name. And I'd also... Uh, I hate to inconvenience you, but I'd like to have you come down to our office this afternoon and talk about it. All right. Uh, I don't know the stewardess's name, and I know you're not from TSA. How do you know that? I don't think they'd be calling me Fez Marie. Well, isn't that your full name? I did the right thing. I don't think the stewardess did. Here's a Dave and PA. You're on Fez. Yeah, Fez, you're just like everybody else. You're reacting to the news. There's yes, no the news of someone trying killed. to blow up a plane over Detroit. Yes, yes I reacted right. to that, that news. And that same threat existed before you watched the newscast. You are more likely to get killed in 20 different ways on your way home tonight when you leave the building. Are you still going to leave? Yes, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to keep a lookout for suspicious items. So you're, that's what you do now? You keep lookouts? I mean, if I'm walking home tonight from the studio, am I just going to walk into the street? No, I'm going to look and make sure a car's not coming through the intersection. I don't see where it's any different. That's not what I asked you. I asked when you go out and you're moving around and you're constantly looking for suspicious things. I keep an eye open, yes. Okay. Uh, Brent, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, Fez, I'm really freaking out, man. I, I uh, just pulled through the Wendy's drive through on my lunch break. And I handed them my money, and they handed me back a suspicious bag. What should I do? See That's his lunch. It's not a suspicious bag. You know where the bag the bag got handed you, to you from the drive through window to you. You're walking down the street. You see trash cans, right? New York. Mm, uh huh. You don't think those trash cans could each have a fucking bomb in them? Yeah, they could. Mm, it could you. happen. Um, Jarhead, you're going to run a fez. Hey, Fezzy. Yes. Buy the fucking sunglasses on the motherfucking plane. Now, if it had been an actual bomb or some sort of explosive device, I would have done the right thing. You did the right thing. No one said you didn't. What we're not, what we're saying to you is, 
when you found out it wasn't a bomb? Why didn't you just release this fucking tension? It was just sunglasses. You st- You are not happy with the fact that there were sunglasses on the plane. That's the only part of this. You wanted it to be a bomb and blow up. No, I'm the flight attendant grabbing it scared me even more. I hate to interrupt, but Lou Holtz is wearing a suspicious pair of um, packages on his head right now. On I didn't sunglasses. find a pair of glasses, asshole. I found a case tucked oh. in the carpet. And now okay. you're fighting with your best friend. Now you fight with your best friend. Just want to make sure that Lou... I'm making sure he's perfectly clear are on you, what I'm saying. Are you two guys best friends? Yes. I don't think so. No. <laughs> Who, who's your best friend? You are. Then why didn't you do what Shower Bench told you, Fez? Why didn't you do what Shower Bench told you? Why did you get me a stupid remote control fucking watch? <laughs> Liz in Florida, you're on Fez. Hey, guys, uh, I woke up Christmas morning, and I almost had a heart attack. My tree had a bunch of suspicious packages under it. With that attitude, I'd be shocked, too. Paul in Wisconsin, you're in Fez. Hey, Fezzy, I don't know who I should call, but I'm sitting behind a big brown truck right now. It's full of boxes, and a guy in a tan outfit is bringing one into a building. All right, that's the UPS man. I tried to do the right thing. I could have ignored it. You did the right thing. What don't you get about that? You... You've repeated it a hundred times, and we've agreed with you a hundred times. Mm-hmm. You saw something suspicious, and then the person opened it up, and it was fine. Right, but I don't think that with this, with what happened on Christmas Day, the Nigerian terrorist trying to blow up a plane, and all the extra security that's been in the airports ever since, I don't think it's the smart move to just grab something that's been pointed out as suspicious and just start flinging it out and opening it. I don't think that's the right procedure. Would you have rather everybody on the plane that they would have sent in a bomb squad? I think that would have been the safest thing way to go, yes. It would have shut down the airport. Mm-hmm. Yes. You think... Now, I, I want to be totally fucking serious about this. You think every time someone leaves behind glasses that the airport should be shut down. This wasn't even left behind like in a seat back or an overhead. It was tucked you, into the carpet. You don't know this. You don't know what it was from. Answer my question. Every time someone loses their sunglasses, we got to shut down an airport. We're not going to be able to live. And these terrorists do this once every couple of years. And all of the rest of our lives stop constantly. Now, let me ask you. I think if the terrorists were smart... They would stop fucking around with airplanes, start fucking around with malls, start fucking around with overpasses. Do you know how many times in your life you're driving, you're either driving over an overpass or under an overpass? A hell of a lot more than you're in a fucking plane. Mm. If they got people as scared of fucking overpasses as they do with planes, they'd have fucking won this war on terror. They'd have us by the balls. My brother was actually discussing on Christmas, he thinks the terrorists should just go into a random small town in America and shoot everyone with machine guns. What is your brother fucking on the side of the terrorists? <laughs> no. I would never believe that. I sit around trying to figure out how we can stop the terrorists. Right. I'm just saying. But that's... I think uh, that what we can't do is suddenly act like we're in a military zone. We're not. We're in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. And we're Americans. Home of the fucking uh, free, land of the brave. Not home of people who fucking shut down airports every single time we see a fucking package of sunglasses. We know what sunglasses are. We're not afraid of them. We use them to block out the sun's rays. I could not tell what they were, but I think everyone's report of a suspicious item should be taken more seriously. It was taken seriously. It was opened up. It was checked. You would be better off that once the, and I'm going to use this in the panic attack world, the danger has passed, you let it go. When you called uh, me when you got home, I heard my chick on the phone with him, right? Oh, it was a bad flight. Oh, it was was a bad flight. Okay, well, you're home now. He gets home with me. Bad flight. He still wants to go back (laughs) through the bad flight. He never wants to get on the ground. You know what I mean? It was a nightmare. It was still in my head. Right. I know that. My That's my point completely. It's not a problem to feel fear, but then you don't want to hold on to it. Like mm. you have a bucket of fear that you carry around with you. 
feel it, and when it passes, let it go. And that's what I'm trying to say here. Don't fear the reaper. Hmm? Then who else would you fear? Uh, Joe, Jersey, Ron Ronnie Fish Show. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, would Bruce Wayne be happy if everybody just got contacts? <laughs> um, Brian, Utica, you're in my Fez. Yo, what's up, guys? Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Fezzy, you keep saying you did the right thing, man. I got to call you out, though. You didn't do the right thing. All you did was uh, jeopardize everybody's life in a terminal, in an airplane airplane terminal, versus your own stupidity of being inconvenienced for like a half an hour, maybe an hour, so they could check to see if it was a bomb. But instead, let's let's take the airplane right to the fucking terminal and, and jeopardize another couple hundred people's lives because you don't want to be on the plane because you're a fucking maniac. I was yeah. trying to help Dude. people get off. Yeah, but he, he does have a point. If that was the, the nuclear sunglass bomb, would have then... Taken into the fucking terminal, um, you cause it. You went beyond your head of what you thought was the most comfortable thing to do, above the safety of everybody. It's the same thing that you're saying about the stewardess, because she didn't panic. I don't think she's a qualified bomb expert. Neither with you, and you thought that the bomb was better off being at the terminal. <laughs> than it was out in the runway. Trying to think of the fastest, safest way to get off the plane. Yes, but what about the people in the terminal? They would have been moved when a bomb squad came by. But what if it exploded? Right. I mean, if we were getting evacuated off the plane through the jetway, everyone would have been cleared from that gate. what What if there wasn't time for an evacuation? What if it just fucking exploded? Why don't you immediately let people know? Excuse me, there's a sunglass case on the plane. Let people start to panic. Claw at the fucking things. You know what would have been perfect? If suddenly the sun would have broke through yesterday, you could reach down, open up the bomb, and put the fucking sunglasses on. Oh, that would have been great. Fezzy, next time you see a case like that, uh-huh. call me and I'll tell you the, the switch uh, clicked the blue wire and not the red wire. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, I think it's the red wire, not the blue. Oh, I don't know what to do. Just click one of them. I love primary See, I colors. I didn't know. I figured we could be... I had every reason to believe we could have been in one of those circumstances. How come there's never like a yellow wire or pink? Ted, you're on Fez. Hey, why does Fez get to decide for the entire airport what's suspicious? I mean, the, the stewardess looked at it and says that's not suspicious and gave up. Right, because I'm the one who saw it. I saw it tucked into the carpet of the plane. Right, but then she looked at it and said, oh, sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was very safe what she did in the atmosphere that we're living in, especially of the past week. Was she wrong? No, she wasn't wrong. This time. Did she save the taxpayers a lot of money? Yes, she did. Did she save the travelers a lot of problems? Yes. Why can't you be thankful to her? Because I don't think she performed her duty safely. Because you will not let go that you thought it was a bomb. You want it to be a bomb. You want horrible things to happen all the time. (laughs) It's why you have sundowners. Why you don't want to leave your apartment. And you've got your lips pursed like a crazy old lady even while you sit there. You see the lips that he has? Mm, yeah. A, a male doesn't get those lips. <laughs> <laughs> They're church lady lips. <laughs> that's special. Because I think what the airline should have done should have been something different. I think Fez... But they were right. Sometimes I think Fez wants to go down and plane crash. Like the people from Lost trying to get back to the island. Yeah. Well, don't ruin it for me. Oh. I didn't know they got off the island. No, they didn't. You know we're going to Netflix this <laughs> book. <laughs> oh, they didn't? <laughs> then I'm going to keep on watching. <laughs> Craig, you're on Fez. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Um, Fez, you just need to fire your shrink, man. I, what happened is you probably told the lady. She probably looked at you kind of funny and it embarrassed you. So now you're pissed off about it. You'll take it to your shrink. She'll tell you it's some form of OCD that you can be proud of because you seem to be proud of all these problems that you have. Just get rid of her, man, and start dealing with your problems. 
No, because here's the thing. I could have panicked a lot worse than, uh, than I could have gotten a lot more scared and panicky than I was. Sure, you're going to shit yourself. So what? That's what you're going to take the credit for? That's always like when people like like fucking grab their chick's neck and shit. You're like, you, dude, you got shot. And you're like, man, I could I could have punched her right in the fucking face, <laughs> but I didn't because I love her. And I'm like, I'm gonna get you a fucking uh, ribbon for this now. You're bragging because you didn't punch her in the fucking face. <laughs> well, I could have. Trust me, I could have fucking nailed her. Fucked her up. Eli and Phil, you're on a fez. Fezzy, is this your favorite song? I wear suspicious packages at night so no one can see in my eyes. Guys with Ears also had a similar song. Yeah, after the fucking real song. Sure, I didn't know. I had never heard of Corey Hart. What the fuck? And he never heard of Guys with Ears. <laughs> Mike Westchester, you're on my Fez. Hey, what's up, Ronnie? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really scared right now because my wife and I had a fridge delivered. And there's the biggest bomb you ever saw in my front yard. Uh, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm really scared right now. Fuzzy, are you surprised that we're, we all don't agree with you? Yes, I am. I'm shocked. Do you think that we're I making... I'm shocked at the airline, too. Do you think that we're all making it up? Mm, yeah. I think anyone would have done what I did and expected... We uh, agree with you. We, we might have done what you did. But then we would have felt relief when it turned out to be nothing. That's where I would like you to get in your life. I would like when something bad doesn't happen for you to feel relief. Well, I mean, I'm glad I didn't blow up, but I don't think that was uh, due to any help from the stewardess. Well, you didn't blow up because sunglasses can't blow up a fucking plane. I want you to understand that. That, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm there. There was no bomb. Right. It was sunglasses. I mean, she might have been able to tell this is just sunglasses. This is not anything. Just like Keith said. And Keith is a guy who's constantly in New York. And his yeah. point was, there is much less likely to be fucking danger than there will be to be danger. Hmm. The odds are on the fucking side of no danger. Not on danger. Uh, Tim, Texas, you're on a fence. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, I think what Fez is trying to say is he's kind of disappointed that there wasn't like a specific protocol set in place for if he, you know, saw the suspicious package as opposed to the flight attendant just going and picking it up. The, what what happened is when Fez sees a fucking sunglasses case, he wants a robot to come in, pick it up, and he wants to be on CNN as a hero. <laughs> that, he wanted to be a hero like his Batman, but for seeing... A fucking sunglasses thing. So instead of saying to the people in front of you, hey, is that your sunglasses there? It's now a suspicious package. Well, it's when you go through security and they're making you take your shoes off and they're checking every Can I ask you a question? Your bag, you Can I ask you a question? Th What's that? Maybe you think that's why the steward is felt safe? Because she knows how difficult it mm. is to get a bomb on a plane in a sunglasses thing? That she probably felt comfortable. It didn't seem too hard on Christmas Day with the terrorists. I understand. But he was caught, though. That's another good thing. He was caught igniting it. Right, but, the, he, but nothing bad even happened there. No, it's caught. The right. fellow passengers stopped him. It worked. Security worked in that situation. And part of the security was a guy sitting next to him who fucking lit his ass up. <laughs> right. Just started fucking drilling him. Um, let's go over here to, uh, Bones. Bones, you're running fast. Uh, Fezzy, I just want to want you to think, and, uh, maybe, maybe I should turn my old lady in for walking around with that funny smell and suspicious package between her legs all the time. What do you think? I you think want, you're quite the flatterer. We'll send a robot over there to go inside. I don't think the robot will make it.